This is Alice Hamilton, a hard-working, innovative doctor and scientist that helped to improve the safety of industrial workers and in the end ended up saving thousands of lives. This is how Alice took a stand in history. At a time when factory workers were drastically falling ill, Alice Hamilton took a stand to help improve the working conditions. Because of her remarkable actions, she largely increased the safety of industrial workers and saved many lives. Alice Hamilton was born on February 17, 1869, in New York City, to the parents Gertrude and Montgomery Hamilton. Later, Alice moved to Fort Wayne, Indiana, where she spent most of her childhood. She lived a secure early life, as her father was a very successful grocer. Instead of forcing Alice and her sister into specific occupations, Alice's mother encouraged them to follow their minds and dreams. Before going to medical college, Alice never really experienced a proper education. She only went to Miss Porter's school in Connecticut for two years. She then decided to go to John Hopkins University in Baltimore. After that, she decided to follow her dreams and went to the University of Michigan and graduated with a medical degree in 1893. She chose a career of medicine because Alice wanted to be independent and successful. Meanwhile, in this time period, factory and industrial workers were being treated very poorly. For one, they had no laws that protected them and their health while on their jobs. There wasn't a whole lot that was governed to protect the average worker in any specific industry. So people were getting hurt a lot left and right and um, there was no compensation for them. Um, they didn't have anyone to go to. There was also no OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, which contributed to the workers' poor health. On top of all of this, the workers were drastically falling ill and no one wanted to complain about it. The reason for this was the majority of the industrial workers were recent immigrants, so they were too afraid that they would get punished to shine a light on the true problem. Before there was regulation, if somebody was causing trouble, and they didn't want to hear about uh, an injury or something that happened or an unsafe condition in the workplace, they would fire them. After medical school, Alice teamed up to help run and work at the Hull House. While at the Hull House, Alice treated poor immigrant factory workers that were sick or injured. Most of their illnesses caused by the dangerous working conditions. She even opened up a baby clinic in the Hull House where she helped to take care of the babies and educate the mothers on health. One of the most prominent diseases she saw was Fossey Jaw, which was caused by the intake of phosphorus fumes. If the person had a defective tooth, the infection would spread deep into the jaw and root of the patient, causing immense pain. In extreme cases, it could even spread to the upper part of the mouth into the eye, causing the patient to lose their eye. Alice saw tons of workers with this untreatable disease, and it was then she discovered that it could be the dangerous factory conditions causing these awful diseases. She even stated in the article, the poisonous occupations in Illinois. What could compensate anyone for an amputated leg or a paralyzed arm, or even an attack of lead colic, to say nothing of the loss of a husband or son? There is a striking occurrence about this time in Chicago, which brought vividly before me the unprotected, helpless state of working men who are held responsible for their own safety. There was nothing there to protect them. There was nobody that they can go to to file a complaint if there was unsafe work conditions. And there was no means of them paying their medical expenses if they got injured on the job. It was an out-of-pocket expense and a lot of people couldn't afford that. So, Alice set to work to try and help these workers. She started by truly understanding what conditions these workers were really dealing with. To do this, Alice hid in the factories sometimes even without permission. She would then take over some of the workers' shifts to understand what things they were encountering in their everyday jobs. In addition, she also descended and climbed into mine shafts and risked her life walking on dangerous catwalks. She did all of these things to research health hazards and dangers that looked at all of the plants. The government heard of her many findings about the working conditions, and the governor of Illinois offered her a commission to study the industrial illnesses all over Illinois. Through this commission, she investigated and studied lead, mercury, carbon monoxide, radium, and solvent solutions. She also scientifically proved the drastic health risks of carbon monoxide, phosphorus, benzene, picric acid, and many more toxic chemicals. In addition with all her studies, she even worked with the factory girls. 
The Factory Girls were a group of women that worked with the labor movement. This movement was to fight for fairness and equality towards factory workers, which included equality in wages and safe working conditions. Not only did Alice work with the Factory Girls, she also worked to help the Radium Girls. These were girls that were becoming sick and eventually dying because of their exposure to radium-contaminated paint. Alice helped to improve their conditions too and helped to save their lives as well. Alice Hamilton had a very remarkable impact in the years to come on factory workers. Through her studies and numerous published works on lead poisoning and toxicology, she definitely let the problems of many industrial workers be heard. She shined a light on the problem that few people knew about. Alice even said herself when she first started her research, you could have counted the published articles on industrial poisoning on the fingers of one hand. All of her work helped to contribute to many hygiene laws, more specifically, the Fair Labor Standards, which are used today. Also, she helped pass the very first workers' compensation laws. In addition to her breakthroughs with health regulations, she also helped to inspire many other women, and so that women can become independent and successful if they work very hard. Alice even said herself, As for the field of industrial medicine, it has been largely closed to women. If an employer needs only one physician, he knows that both men and women workers will be content to have a man, but he is by no means sure that the men would accept a woman doctor. Even if there were not this objection, there would still be the half-unconscious attitude of most industrialists towards women, that their place in the industrial world is strictly a subordinate one. But I feel sure that, once they have found a way in, women will not only make good, but will remain as one essential part of the system. Alice did not stop her work there, though. In 1919, Alice was appointed the first female faculty member at Harvard University Medical School. This was a huge step in breaking the gender barrier for female doctors and students, as at this time the school wasn't even admitting female students. She performed such exceptional work at the school, she later became their first public health professor. Also, while working at Harvard, Alice served two terms on the Health Committee of the League of Nations. Finally, at the age of 66, Alice retired from Harvard, but she still continued to make her impact and share her work with the world. So, she became a consultant to the U.S. Division of Labor Standards and even served as the president of the National Consumers League. She also wrote several books about the dangers that take place in many working environments. These books were extremely important to spreading the truth about keeping workers safe and about the toxins which had been causing illnesses for a very long time. All of them spread her years of research across the country so everyone could understand it. This research provoked thoughts in numerous people's minds and inspired many people to follow in her footsteps. Alice Hamilton died on September 22, 1970. She died in the town of Hadlam, Connecticut at 101 years old. Alice Hamilton risked her life to try and save thousands of industrial workers and helped to inspire other females to follow their true passions, even if no one believes in them. By taking a stand for women and for factory workers, Alice truly left an impact on our world today.